Good morning. Welcome to our latest YouTube vlog. We are going for another sapphire, external sapphire. We're taking a wall start out of the wall, bricking the hole up and putting an external sapphire in. We thought we'd do another external sapphire video because we love them. And there was a lot of views on the last one, so we thought we'd just show us a different version of a different way we do it, etc, etc. So I hope you enjoy it. We're hoping this time around to get a bit more detailing when we're setting it up and wiring it, etc. Which we didn't get on the last video. It's hard when you've got customers around and you're trying to concentrate on a video and they want to talk to you. Clearly you can't do your videoing because the customers are more important. So this one, it's a bit quieter, the customer's going to be out. So we'll have a little bit more time to get a bit more detail for you. Anyway, thanks very much for everyone that subscribes. As always, uh, we really appreciate it. Without you, we wouldn't want to be doing this again. So enjoy the ride with us. And yeah, here we go again. New Sapphire boiler. We're going to put just about here. Unfortunately, we're going to have to cut a bit out of this decking that's here at the moment and we're going to have to then put a concrete base in the same height as the decking because we don't want to be putting the boiler on the decking because clearly the rocks is going to fall out and the soakaway is either going to go beside it or it's going to go into the waste drain there. Here's the wall star we're going to take out. Um, we'll show you a bit more about that later and we're going to do some dodgy plumbing brickwork which hopefully look really, really nice but not too sure how we're going to get them joints like that but there we go, we're going to do that. Um, I'm here today with Adam, who is in the house at the moment. He's just draining off there like so, off the boiler. I like working with Adam, he's a good bloke. So there's his van, look everybody, just to prove he's here with me. Brilliant. And as we all know, we're fitting the sapphire today. It's about half nine. We've got the boiler out, as you can see. The problem I have now is I've got to re-brick this hole up. And what you don't do, like we see a lot of people, is literally just fill the hole up. We need to be cutting out all the half bricks here all the half bricks there etc and they're cutting them out of there so we're gonna have to cut lots of little bits and bobs out here we've already got a crack in this brick as well so we need to make a decision about that really because we don't want to take half the house apart at the end of the day the mortar i was lucky when i popped to the local suppliers that actually there was a brick layer in there and he said they used to do it with um sharp sand and building sand years ago and um, what you do to get over it is use plastering sand which is a bit of each so we'll take that tell me what to do so that's even better um, so i now know my mortar mix so i'm going to start bricking a hole up once i've done that i'm going to crack on there and start pulling up the floor in to get our base in adam's just popping upstairs and finishing off up there there was no bypass in this job with a sapphire you've got to have a bypass if you don't you'll just overheat so he's up there doing that he's also taking the circulator pump out the system and he um, he's going to install it the other side of the wall where this hole is so all in all half past nine yeah we're doing very well we're really pleased and uh hey presto sapphire we love a sapphire brilliant it's about half ten i'm starting to uh, do well with the old brickwork and i'm getting that out and uh, Adam is crawling a hole for me. Say morning, Adam. Morning. There's Adam. Look at his tan look. He's been on holiday, bless him. Better tan than me anyway. So, uh, yeah, just crawling through there to get the flying turns through. And then he'll connect that up the side and then we can go from there. Marvellous stuff. Look at him, isn't he? Adam. It's half eleven now. As you can see, I have sorted the brickwork out now, so it's all cut out all ready for me to try and do some magic with it obviously that's not a cement that's just the inside there that's fine adam's called his two holes as well um yeah it's going to take me a while so uh let's see how my plumber's brickwork goes shall we one hole bricked up it looks worse than what it is at the minute because clearly the cement's got to go off but i'll take that because that's quite hard to do adam's got the flow and returns through if we're going to pop in there and we're going to ask adam what he's doing adam what are you doing Brilliant, Adam's doing nothing. He's got the flow return pipes from the old boiler that comes around and it's just popping them through the wall. So we're really happy with that. We now have the system full of water and we've got the power flush as you can see connected. It's about three o'clock now. Uh, so we're gonna get on and give it a right old good power flush. And to be honest, it's not dirty. So we're gonna go through it anyway. Go and stick it on there three, four hours and then we can go from there. And I've just done the base for the boiler to sit there because as we said earlier it's wooden and it doesn't it isn't very secure so at the end of the day it could rot out and the boiler fall through one day so I've done that as well so we're just going to power flush and then tidy up for the day and that'll be the end of day one morning day two of the 
sapphire installation where we've removed the wall star it went very well the other day got the base down as you see got my bit of brick work done i'm hoping it's going to go off okay and then done the power flush a bit dirtier than we thought we thought it was going to be quite clean but actually we're quite a bit off the magnet so we ended up being there till like half past eight nine o'clock at night but the main thing is all clean now we've left it at a bar and a half of pressure isolated off so we can just double check it hasn't lost any and yeah we're, we're a day on now we've missed a day so we should get it done today with a bit of luck if everything goes well just wiring etc oil line condensed stuff like that so excited uh join today's journey so me and me and robert got another sapphire boiler together today very exciting we love our sapphire boilers they are very good boilers very fun to install very easy um, very straightforward don't matter who you are we all love a straightforward day don't we so yeah gonna crack on with that just stopped at the petrol station, gonna get me and Robert coffee. Everyone knows he, <laughs> he loves his coffee. Um, so yeah, gotta get him his coffee in the morning. I thought I'd be nice today. I mean, our last boiler job, but <laughs> you know, I forgot the trailer. Um, <laughs> so this time I'll get him a coffee. <laughs> at, least I'm, at least I'm turning up with Sunny. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll give it a good go. Bring you guys along. Like I say, this one's gonna be a lot easier than the one before. Last week, um, Robert and his good friend Adam have already done most of the plumbing in this place. So I think, from my understanding, we're just running all lines, condenses, and um, yeah, plumbing up a new boiler. It's an external sapphire again, very exciting. And yeah, let's go get some coffee. We're back, everybody. So this is where we got to the other day. The flow and the returns are in. There's the mag on the return. We've still got to put the pump in there. We didn't put it in the other day because we didn't want it to be involved in the power flush because of the dirt. One down there, two valves. We've just um, drain offs. We've just undone them at the moment just so we can drain the system again. And obviously they pop through. I've still got to, there's my brickwork on the other side. I've still got to block the hole up there. And if we come around here, there's the pipes there. Concrete base has gone off. We're very, very pleased with our um, brickwork. It's dried really well. Not perfect, but we're really happy with that. And there's the boiler we're gonna put in today. We're gonna show you in a bit more detail what comes with the sapphire boiler, because the other day when we done the video, we was in a bit of a hurry, to be honest. So we have a box of bits here. Obviously, that tells you what is in the boiler or what accessories you get with the boiler, but we don't need that because we know anyway. We have the flue. Like I said before, there's a cone in there. That's the game changer. That quietens the boiler down. It can go in whichever direction of the boiler you want. It can go there, it can go there, it can go there, or you can have a top outlet, obviously not this flue. So that's that part there. You've got a lovely stainless steel terminal guard, a little plastic converter so we can put it on if we want to, but we're not gonna use that, we're gonna do a plume kit. And then we've got the hose. So we are gonna try and show it in more detail this time because we did it last time. This is the hose, this goes onto the air intake. So the air intake is gonna be approximately here. The hoses are gonna go down around the back and then it's gonna pop onto the front on the air fan that I'll show you later. So we're just gonna pop that down there. And we'll have a nice little box of bits here. All wrapped nicely. That's the relay kit. We're gonna show that in more detail again than last time. This is the air intake. So this was, in our case, will go into the top of the compression chamber there. And then when the fan is running, the fan will pull the air, obviously on the balance flue hose side there, into the boiler. Um, and then the dirty gases obviously come out and away it goes. So that will be fitted later, which we'll show you. We've got accessories. This is a really silly little thing, but really handy. It will go on here where the flue goes through, or on here, or on here, wherever each side it's gonna go. In this case, it's gonna go on the back actually, and seals it, stops the water going through. Along with these two connectors, the cable grommet connectors here. I'm not gonna use them because I'm using conduit, but if you are just doing them, they're brilliant things, we're really good really happy with them as I said full stainless steel trap okay for the condense really well made these you can have a pump on these we're not going to have a pump we're going to go straight into the drain and then we've got these 
these just clip into all these bits. You've got that one down here. They just clip into here, okay? And then obviously the pipes go through and it just, you know, seals everything like it's supposed to be sealed. So they really think about every aspect of this, which we're really pleased about. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing worse than getting a boiler from a manufacturer and what you find is that you just get no parts and you have to keep going off and getting this and getting that and it does your editing. Finally, it even comes with the connectors. So you've got this connector which can go on the flow which will come out the right hand side or in our case on the left hand side. And then you've got the return one which is here which goes in the bottom of the boiler which will come out on the left. We've got the additional cone if we want to jack it up, for example, to make it a bigger output. We don't need this, but we'll keep that. The customer have that for another day. You never know, might want to do it, some extra work on the house. A couple of nozzles. You've got your a flexible nipple with a non-return valve. Really important, these non-return valves. If you don't fit them and the oil runs back slightly, then you get a bit of a flutter on far up of the boiler. And then you get a blank. Your blank goes on whichever side you want on your flow, because again, we don't know, well in this case it's going out on the left of the flow, so this blank will go on the right hand side. And they even think of the good old oil boys, you've got a 3.8 to 10 mil compression fitting as well. But we are missing an insert boy, so remember that. So I'm going to, I've uh, just taken out the old, the old fire valve, going to come up here, put an isolation valve here, come up, filter, fire valve, in the boiler, when we get it there. Eventually. Brilliant. And what degree fire valve are you using? Uh, not 90 degree, I think. That's right. It? Yeah. The reason we're using the 90 degree, it's an outside boiler. In the summertime, the sun gets on outside boilers and it cooks them. And if you put 65 degrees in, it tends just to make them trip, which is an absolute nightmare. So yeah, we go for a 90 degree one. It is approximately quarter to 12. And all I can say is we're doing okay. We are in a mess, but I don't know how everyone else feels about this, but whenever you do an install, it's really hard to do it without making a mess because you just have to literally empty your whole van just to do a tiny thing on an install. Seems you're crazy, but there we go. So, Ryan, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, actually. I've got, I've got, the, I've got an isolation valve in here now, so we've got control of the oil. We've got a non-return valve just to make sure the oil doesn't return because of where the tank is. We've got a filter here, spin-ons, our favourite. We love a spin on. We love a spin on. Nice and easy. Obviously, fire safety valve in there. Come through. It's got and I've got to use so many joints. We hate our joints, but as you can see, I've made the most of it. No excess joints. Got a nice bend in here. Bend up here. Gonna go in that quarter fit in there. Bosh. And Oil. for everyone that's asking, yes, we do use inserts. There's one in my hand, <laughs> as yeah. you can see. Very important. Really important. Use an insert, even if pipe. they were paying up the bottom to get in. As for me, I've piped to the boiler while I'm down there. I've had to cross, unfortunately, because when me and Adam were together the other day, I asked for the flow to come out the right. And unfortunately, it come out his right <laughs> because I didn't specify it was his right or my right. So brilliant. It was the wrong way around. It was always going to happen, but at least I could cross it so it's nice and straightforward. So I'm onto there like so. Flow going out. Obviously, I've blanked that off. And if we come around here, it's the B moves. You can see I've got the return in as well. Also got the condensing, the pipe goes in down the side. You can see it's a condensed pipe starting, which is going to go along here and it's going to bosh into there, bosh, like that at some point. So it's going to come out the back. You can see I've knocked the hole through, but that's about as far as I've got. I'm going to start on the wiring now, which I'll go through with you. Just going to pop inside. We have now sorted out inside. So we've got the mag filter here. We've got the ground phosphorylating pump here. Um, obviously flow goes that way. Two isolations for the pump. Goes through all neat and tidy. We're happy with that. Obviously, there's an earth there. I've got to put that back on. I need to go pop and get an earth strap. I've normally got loads of them, but like anything, you run out sometimes. That's off the old wall star. So there's your permanent live neutral earth and your switch live in that lot there. So there's the isolator there. I'm going to come through. Um, I have just pulled that back. It looks a bit grey in there. So I'm going to have a little look in there in a little while. I'm going to come through and then go outside to the isolator and then wiring, which I'll explain. And voila, we still have a hole. I've got to block that up. Firm lights. Once that's done, they'll go off pretty quick actually in this weather. And then I could just skim some cement over the top, leave it, because the customer's gonna finish it off and he's gonna fill over the top and do his 
bit of magic because he wants to decorate the cupboard. I think he wants to knock all of this area out and make it all good in here. So yeah, he didn't want us to fill that hole, but I'd feel a bit guilty just leaving that. So I just figured for the sake of free thermalite blocks and a bit of bit of cement, it's gonna be nice and straightforward. So that's where we're at at the moment. We're happy. Yeah, it's 10 to 12 now, because I've been nattering away for three minutes. Um, yeah, we're all right. we're filling it up in a minute. So fingers crossed we have no leaks on what I've done this morning. So we're just starting on the flue. Thought we'd show you how we do it because there's a very specific way to do it. So first of all, in this in this case, what we're doing today, the flue is going to come out this way up the wall. So if we just take this on off really quickly. All right, done. All right. So first things first, you obviously met with a seal. You do not use that seal. Throw that seal away. What we do is we use the seal. That comes with it put the seal on there you slide that over the top like that you use these screws with the washers do not re reuse these screws I've got the unit here now if you look really closely we've got a seal in there we've got the four screws with the washer which is very very important then what you do is balance flue hose very nice these ones you know db much much better than some of the other ones you get. Thread it underneath. See what comes out there. You, you literally fish it in there like that. How easy is that? Hide it in there and then come around this side. And this comes through, goes behind there. And I'll show you that when I get it done. Simple. Now what I'm gonna do, just gonna chop this insert out. So we can look down and line the flue up. I'm gonna stick this back on, get it in place. Then I'll build the flue and I'll show you how the flue is built. So we're just gonna to talk to you about these flues um, because we think they're excellent. So first of all, we've got a flue, very exciting. It has a cone in it. On this install today, we're gonna to take the cone out. This is for noise reduction. It makes a, actually a really big difference and um, it's great. But like I say, we're gonna take this out today because we've grown up on a nice plume kit it's going to have a cone in it anyway so we'll forget about that today inside you've got exhaust fumes out you've got an air intake on the outside air in air comes via here that you don't actually see which is quite nice it's at the bottom they're never going very well because obviously the seals they come out it comes with some real nice flu grease that they send with it which is really helpful now a real big top tip from us, don't grease the seals because what we find is as you're pushing in, the grease builds up and actually pushes the seals out. What we find is better to seal inside here, inside here with the grease, and actually grease a little bit of this seal as well, um, just to make it a lot easier to go in. I'm gonna push this in, take the cone out, and I'll show you the next step. Greased here. I've greased here and I've put a very slight grease in on the seal as well just to make it slide in. Like I said, air intake at the bottom, one seal there, one seal there. Now you must be very gentle in doing this. The seals can fall out very easily. Just take your time. I like to twist it as well a little bit just to help it very gently, just like that. Make sure it's in there nice. Get it nice and level. And there you go. My, this time, the seal's actually falling out for me. <laughs> so I'll have to do it again. But you understand it. This is usually what you struggle with. It's just, just a sealing ring. And as you're pushing a cone in it, it falls in with the flue of the cone. So what we like to do is first, two screws here, undo them. Give you some room to play with. You can get your fingers behind there and get, get that seal nice and straight. You can see it's all in there real nice. Just gonna quickly take this cone out start and I'll, sh I'll show you the next stage first of all clamp number one clamp number two to hold the flue section in we've got an elbow up just so obviously i can have a line to see where i'm going now if you if you come here very important obviously you've got the cone you take the cone out you're left with four holes make sure you put a screw in them four holes make sure they're screwed up so we don't get any leaks all I'm going to do now is put this in line. By the looks of it, this clamp's a bit too big. So I'm just going to take that first section off there on both of them so it slides in nice. Get the clamps on, make sure it's nice and straight. 
wipe it down, away we go. This next section is dedicated to Joe. Joe, the electrician. Joe, you know who you are. He comments regularly, I know Joe quite well, on our trunking and bits and bobs like that. And he's saying it's all good, but you know what electricians are like? They think they can do a little bit better. So I just thought I'd show him what we get up to. <laughs> so Joe, this is literally for you. And we know Joe, don't we, Ryan? We know Joe very well. Very, yeah. very, well. Very, very, very well. So we have put the Joey baby. BG British General switched rotary switch on. There's the other part of it here. I'll show you how to wire it up very shortly. And just for the purposes of Joe, there we go. And guess what? It's level. Okay, I've got my five core coming through. I've got two clips, you must use clips. And then very clearly my conduit goes down and into the boiler. It's dusty at the minute, clearly we'll clean that later. And as you can see, it clips in there nicely with the correct fittings. And then we've got another one beside that's gonna go up and pop through a hole here because that is gonna be the one that is our feed for our pump, for pump override, which our pump's inside. So this is where we're at and I'm gonna show you how we wire it. We are gonna wire the rotary switch first. So I hope you're gonna learn something, Joe. <laughs> okay, sorry, we're taking the mickey out of him, everybody, but uh, yeah, we love it. So we've got the neutrals, you don't have to use it, you can use it on there, but we're using it. So we're gonna undo all the terminals, like so. Which maybe I should have done before we started the video, but hey, it adds 10 seconds. <laughs> Right, there we go. This is the wire from inside. This is the wire to the boiler. The conduit comes from inside, up through. We've put that clip in the middle because we're literally going just to there where we put two clips on that because we're going into the boiler low and it's obviously coming out here. So, I'm just gonna strip the wire back first. Just gonna trim them down a little bit. Now, something that we do that electricians don't do Ha ha, we put stuff in the bin as we go. <laughs> so you'll have to chuck it on the floor. But we're actually gonna put it in the bin. That's really novel. So just a nice little tip out there, mate. Okay, right, here we go. I'm just gonna give that a little strip. Voila. Hear that line, that went in the uh, bin. That's in the bin, yeah. wasn't it, yeah. And we're gonna go again. I'm done, what's that? In the bin. Like that, in the bin. Okay, so we need to cut the... It says string out the way. So we've got live, neutral, earth, and we need a switch live. We're gonna choose a gray. So we're gonna cut that out the way. And we're gonna cut All fingers and thumbs here. Let me out of the way. And we're going to put it in the bin. We'll put that to one side. We also use, I'm going to get corrected for this, I know. We use these little end dude, we call it things that go on the end of the wires. It just makes a nicer, neater job of it. So we're using them as well. So we're just going to strip the wires one at a time so in the bin and we're going to get our pimpers put that on the end and we're going to crimp i'm just going to do the rest of these and i'm going to come back to you in a second we have crimped ends i've put the earth in because it can be a bit fiddly just undo and drop it in the top and bottom. If for some reason you can't do it, which sometimes you can't, there is a screw in the middle, you can undo it, drop the earth clamp out, put it together with all the wires and push it back again. So here we've got your L1, L2, L3, and your T1, 2, and 3. L1 is the ins, so it's from the supply. So it's really straightforward. We're literally gonna put the live in. 
like so. So as you can see, it goes in better. If that was just wires, that would cause us a bit of an issue. Earth's gonna go there. Neutral. Neutral's gonna go there. <laughs> see, Joe, that's why I'm, I'm not an electrician, because I don't know what they are. And the switch is gonna go in there. Like so, I'm just gonna do that one up. We don't want that rattling around. Okay, all nice and tight. Okay, if that was just wires in there because of the size of the terminals, it would just fall out and rip out. So that's the in. I'm gonna go with the out. Same scenario. One. To do that one up. Not quite sure why I've done it to start with, but there we go. Make sure they're in nice and tight, otherwise, you're going to get issues further down the road. Pull, pull, pull. No problems. We're going to flick there. We go into there like so. This is the bit that can be a bit fiddly if you don't do it every day of the week like us. And boom, we're in. With the wires, push them neatly out the way. Fold them out the way. Just push them down the side. They're out the way, they can't get caught. But see these ones in the bottom. Very, very straightforward. And we'll just get the rotary switch to cover now. Make sure the rotary switch is in the off position. If it's not in the off position, you literally can't take it off. It's a safety device. When it's in the on position, you just literally doesn't come off. So we push it on, like so and then I'm going to do it up. But just to prove my point, if it's in the on position, you can't physically get it off. You have to have it in the off position. It's just so you can't electrocute yourself, basically. So we're just going to stick that in there. Just line that up like so. So it can be a bit tight sometimes if you've knit the back plate up a bit tight, which I think I probably have. These are literally only plastic screws, so just make sure when you do it, you don't over tighten them. They'll be really neat and tidy, like so. And as you can see, the rotary switch is now done. I'm gonna leave that in the off position, and I'm gonna get into the wiring center that's here now, and I'm gonna do that part in a minute. We're coming on this side here where the five core comes in. We have got, normally I put heat shrink on here, black heat shrink, I buy it in reels, but I've run out. So I, it's a bit of a nightmare. I've had to use a different color and some short bits, which isn't ideal, but obviously it's still covered and protected. I've also, um, here's your switch live here, and here's gonna be the neutral for the relay. I've put a little blue tag on the end just so I don't get confused. I've put the neutral in and the live in, and I've put the earth in. So when we power it up, clearly the boiler is now gonna power up. And here is the pump. So we're just gonna come under here with the wire. We're going to come around there like so. I'm going to strip it. I'm not going to use the ends, the special ends on here, because they can just go in. So we're going to, to slip that like that. Oh, hear that, Ryan? Bin. <laughs> okay, in the and we're just going to strip them. One. Two. And three. And simply, they're gonna go into there, live neutral air for the pump override. Okay, that's as simple as that. The other two wires are here, your open firm wires. There's only two ways of doing this. One is obviously the O and the T, the open firm, which comes from your thermostat, etc. whichever devices, whether it's Genius or Nest or Honeywell Home, whatever you decide to use, Evo Home. What you can't do is put 240 volts to that. If you put 240 volts to that, it's gonna go bang. It's gonna blow the PCB to bits. So because this guy's already got Hive and he's already got all the thermostats and absolutely everything attached to the Hive, it's not open firm the Hive, but there's no way we could tell him that he's got to chuck it all away and start again. So we decided to run this on a switch live, um, which is fine because he's still got all his other controls on his radiator, so it still does a really good job. So we're going to remove this link now, out of here, one, two. And it specifically says when we pull this link out, not 240 volts, 230, there it is, look. Okay, 
everyone needs to read that and just really, really make sure that you do that. So all I'm gonna do now is wire in the circulating pump and then I'm gonna come back to you about the relay. This is the loom that comes in the kit for your open firm if you're going switch live and it's got a wiring diagram with it as well, but clearly we've done it before. So we push one onto the common. It doesn't really matter which way round on there, or which one it is, and one is NO. If it's on NC, it won't work properly, so it's NO. So we're going to push that in there like so. They're quite tight, they are. Then we're going to run it round under there, and we're going to plonk them into six and seven. Again, it doesn't matter which way round. Don't ask me why, but I always seem to do it. So the brown's on the common into the red, and the NO is the black into the black. It doesn't make any difference. I've always done it that way around. It works, so I figured it's done. Simple as that. So that's half the relay wired in. The other part is gonna be the switch live and the neutral. Again, it doesn't really matter which way around. It's just gonna switch anyway. So I'm gonna put the neutral on that terminal there, and I'm gonna put the switch live on that terminal there. I'm just going to make them up and then I'll show you how to do it in a second. I've now put the crimps on the end. They're only tiny little things, you have to a little be careful when you do them. And as I say, I'm going to put the neutral. I tend to use this side. I say there's no particular way around, but it's the way I always go. And then I'm going to put the switch live on this side, which is always very tight to put on. So what's going to happen is when it powers up, that there's power to the boiler. And then what's gonna happen is we are gonna turn the hive on. The motorized valve is then obviously gonna turn, hit the orange wire on the motorized valve that will send a signal to this relay. It will click, it will then send a low voltage signal to the open firm part of the boiler. That obviously is talking to the PCB board that then decides to fire the boiler. And that's basically how it works. So all I have left to do now, I've wired the boiler, all I have left to do now is put the wires in the clamp properly, cut a small bit out of the cover, and then stick the cover back on, and that's this side done. So, uh, yeah, we're doing okay. Not bad for plumbers, eh, Joe? <laughs> we are done. We're going to run through the setup again at the Sapphire Boiler. So if you come round here, Ryan, first things first, we've got the kit ready to go. And here is the Sapphire box of tricks that set it up. So we're going to pull the, we're going to turn it on. There we go. We're going to pull the plug out of the bottom. And we're going to stick the correct one in. There we go. Okay, so here's your screen here. We're just going to hit at the top there. We're just going to keep going through. These are just various settings of the fan speeds and the pump pressures, etc. We're going to fire the boiler. That's your initial pump pressure at 15 bar because these go up to 20 bar, which is your maximum there. We're then going to continue. It's not a combination boiler. There is one coming out, but not at the moment. We're going to keep going through. That's our central heating set point, which is 70 degrees. Minimum pump pressure is five bar. And we're going, going. So we're going to fire up. We're going to start approximately 15 bar of pressure. And then we're going to go, we're going to go for 50 for a start. Now it might not always fire straight up, but we're going to see what happens. And we're going to wait. It takes about 10 seconds. we're off. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pump the pump pressure up to 20 bar, increasing the fan speed at the same time. But we're going to start about there. We're going to pull the plug out. We know that goes about halfway there into the flue and away we go. There we have it. So we're just now waiting. We want to see that at about 13 to 13 and a half the CO2, and we want to see the O2 be about three. Okay, the maximum operating temperature in the flu of these, we're getting about 50 maximum, maybe 60 sometimes if we're lucky, um, but they're really good. This one's been running a long time before we've yeah, set it up. Might want to plug the machine in. Okay, so we might even want to plug the machine in if you want so let's have another go. Oh wow. And off we go. Look at that, look everybody, it works now. Perfect. And we're flying around. So as you can see, the emissions are way too high. So we're just going to pick it up a little bit. And we're going 
going to put the fan speed to about 67%. It might have to go a bit more than that at the moment, so we'll just see it. It's not smoking, so that's great, 15.4%, and it wasn't smoking, that's brilliant. Okay, that's just dropping down now, as you can see. this one once we've got this one set in the right place then we can go from there and away it goes so yeah we just have to wait a little while be quite patient here as you can see the co2 is dropping and the o2 is raising and then we're going to drop it down to 19 bar we're going to drop the fan speed a couple the fan percentage and then we're going to wait you just have to be a bit patient with this turn a bit more on the fan speed if you're not patient it just won't run properly at the end so we just need to get this exactly right CO2 will rise slightly now and the O2 will drop. That's acceptable, but we're going to be a bit OCD and we're going to go a little bit better than that. There we go, spot on. So we're going to set that again and we're going to drop it to 18 bar and we're going to repeat and we're going to repeat right down to 5 bar. And that is basically how you set a sapphire boiler up. When you finish, you, you save all your settings and then it's job done. So as you can see, this is a great install. We're really happy with it. And that's another successful one for us. Happy customer, that's what we like. Another external sapphire fitted. Really happy customer, really pleased of it. It modulates really well, so we're really happy. We're happy with the job overall, um, especially the brickwork. I was really happy with that. There's going to be a couple of tiny bits missing on this video because unfortunately the last part of the wiring, which I was going to explain all the inside and bricking up the whole inside, along with showing the balanced flue hose going onto the motor. Unfortunately, I videoed all them the wrong way around, so it meant that we couldn't do them on the vlog. We've done it in portrait, silly me. But you get the gist of it all. These things happen. We're only amateurs at the end of the day, aren't we? So I hope you all enjoyed the vlog. Joe, you, you know you are. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, we're just taking the mickey, mate. It's uh, all good fun and all in jest, as you know. Um, anyway, take care, everyone. Stay safe, and we'll see you on the next vlog. Bye for now come out so what we recommend is it comes with some lovely um i don't know um karen i hope you do a good job i videoed this one in my van this morning because clearly i forgot the other day have a nice day and that finishes like there with the seal and so fiddly Thank you.